Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for working in extraordinary ways through ordinary people, people just like you know, all of us here. Lord, today help us see how Elizabeth's patience and waiting for something difficult in her life to be removed was removed when you finally sent John the Baptist to her. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, think of a time in your life that you felt a little bit ashamed. How about, how would you feel if I said, why don't you just come right up here in front right now and share that for everybody? I'm guessing this would be a very short service. In fact, you'd probably make a beeline for the door and straight out. I wouldn't blame you. We've all dealt with shame. We all know what it means to feel ashamed. And that's something we want to keep to ourselves. In fact, about the last thing we want to do is go online and let the whole world know about this horrible thing we're feeling right now. But the problem is when we keep it inside, it does tend to eat away at us after a while. Shame has different faces. Sometimes it's the result of our own actions, and admittedly, we need to own up to that. Sometimes shame is the result of something another person has done to us. It's out of our control. Sometimes shame is about how people look at us and start judging us on things they know nothing about. Shame, with all of its faces, comes to us with the same goal. It leaves us lonely, depressed, broken, and wondering, where does my value truly come from? But fortunately for us, shame has an answer, and that answer is Jesus Christ. In Jesus, all of our shame is literally taken away. He brings us wholeness. He brings us healing. He takes our sin upon himself. By his wounds, we have been healed, and he says, in me, you find completeness, a fresh start. Today is an invitation to stop and to get off that treadmill of shame and instead to step into the loving arms of our newborn Savior. He says, I have done this for you. So today we see an example of this. We come to the story of an ordinary wife named Elizabeth. We see how God removed what was in her day that private and public shame that she was feeling. And he doesn't just remove little tidbits of it. He takes all of it away. Now, we met Elizabeth two weeks ago when we met her husband, Zechariah, an ordinary priest. In Luke 1, verse 6, we are told that both of them were called upright in the sight of the Lord. In other words, they observed the Lord's commands and regulations. They weren't perfect but they were faithful. The angel Gabriel came to Zechariah and told him, even though your wife is barren and she's old, you're going to have a son. Now, if you think back to those ancient times, this was a big deal for Elizabeth. It brought public and private shame in that day, and I want to emphasize that for a barren woman. But they remained faithful even under the most difficult of circumstances. Nor do I want to downplay this issue today. I have walked alongside many, many young parents, parents, let's try that again, many young couples who have not been able to have children. There's often a lot of struggle and heartache that comes with that. Today, fortunately, women find value in more than simply having children. There's a lot you can find value in. That's a far different shame than what Elizabeth had to deal with back in her time. Back in her day, if you were a woman, there was, this was one of the primary ways in which you found value. You had lots of kids. <laughs> Oof, that's an arm load. And if you didn't have kids in that day, people would view you like, there's something wrong with you. Elizabeth lived with deep internal shame wondering, What's wrong with me? Everyone else will look at her and go, Elizabeth, what's wrong with you? For a faithful Jew in the day, if you didn't have kids, apparently you had sinned, or your family had done something wrong. It's horrible. 
She lived with this shame she had zero control over. Some of you know what that's like. You live with the shame of something that was done to you that you had no control over. You feel trapped in it. But today, Jesus comes to you and says, you don't have to feel that way because you have been healed. In Jesus, you find healing and wholeness that you're not going to find in our world today. In the midst of Elizabeth's private and public shame, Gabriel comes with this wonderful news. Your shame is going to be removed. For five months, Elizabeth remained in seclusion while she was pregnant. And then she said these words in Luke 1.25, The Lord has done this for me. He has shown me his favor and has taken away my disgrace, my shame from among the people. So with those words in mind, we now skip down to verse 39 in today's text from Luke 1. There are two scenes of celebration and joy taking place here. Mary's pregnant, so what's the first thing she does? She goes to see her relative Elizabeth. She knows that the Son of God is alive in her. Now, we don't know if these two were cousins or Elizabeth was her aunt. We do know Elizabeth was quite a bit older than Mary. But this whole scene could have played out radically different than it actually did. You see, it could have been a huge soap opera. This much older woman had been painfully waiting her entire life to have a child. And then here comes this young whippersnapper, 12-year-old approximately Mary. She's pregnant with the Savior of the world, an even greater child than her child, John the Baptist, would be. She could have been absolutely jealous, but instead, she is covered, she is filled with the joy, and I love the words she says here. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. As soon as the sound of your voice hit me, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And her next words can be written on our hearts. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. These two women recognize they are a special part of God's bigger story of rescue, of redemption. How could they not celebrate? In Luke chapter 1, the Holy Spirit is all over the place. He's here with Elizabeth and Mary long before Jesus would ascend into heaven on the day of Pentecost and then leave the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. The Spirit was active in the ordinary, everyday lives of Zechariah and Mary. And by the way, when the Spirit's alive and active, there's a lot of celebrating going on. They're rejoicing together at what God is going to do through them. And then after John the Baptist was born, all the neighbors from the community were there celebrating with her. Even when Elizabeth's life was hard and she wondered where God's favor was, she remained faithful. Who took notice of that? Everybody around her. When God's favor was on her, they all rejoiced and celebrated. That's a great lesson for us. When life becomes hard and we remain faithful, people around us do take notice. They wonder, what's in you? And they have, wish they had the same peace in their lives. Now she knows that it's far more than having a child. Elizabeth was carrying the forerunner to the Savior, a child named John the Baptist. God is working out his plan of old from the Old Testament through these two women. Now, if you look at it from the outside, it seems too perfect and almost too easy. Some of you may even be thinking, wait a minute here. I'm faithful to God, but I'm still waiting for him to act and to give me what it is that I need. But here's the truth. For those of us who follow Jesus Christ as Lord, we have all that we truly need in him. Now, there's one other side of shame. 
the shame that we sometimes bring on ourselves by our own silly decisions. There's shame and struggle that comes with various forms of addiction, alcohol, pornography, and the list goes on from there. This is the one I encounter most often. The shame in a poor decision that was made years ago, you just can't let go of. There's shame sometimes in the way that we treat our bodies or the way we feel about them. Satan would love for us to get stuck there and not be able to move on and keep it all bottled up inside. But Jesus says, no, I have a different message for you. It's a message of truth that releases you from the power of shame as he brings it out into the light and he forgives it. Jesus Christ came not only to take away our shame, but to become shame by becoming sin on the cross as he died there for us, so you and I would be his forgiven children. That's something he's done for each one of us. But this is where it gets hard. Instead of keeping that shame all bottled up inside, we need to share it with someone who loves Jesus so we can hear these great words. You're forgiven. Your shame is gone. Now there is a fantastic story about this in the Bible. It's about a king who was called a man after God's own heart. But this king knew what it meant to live in shame. He had an affair. He impregnated a woman. And then to cover up his, his shame, he had her husband murdered in the front lines of a war. A good friend, the prophet Nathan, came to this man who just happened to be King David and said, David, you need to repent. In response, David wrote this amazing psalm. It's Psalm 51. The heading of it says, The Psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after David committed adultery with Bathsheba. I'd like you to listen to the healing words that come in this psalm that was written from David's heart because they are powerful. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions. And my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are proved right when you speak, and you are justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I'll be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let, let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sin and blot out all my guilt. And then the part we probably know better than any other. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, nor take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. This man, a great king, also a murderer and an adulterer, realized that God can forgive him. What about you? Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Today, above all the other voices that are barking, clamoring to get into our lives and that can drive us crazy, hear the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking the truth. You're forgiven. You're a child of God. Leave behind those things that lead to shame. Jesus invites you to follow him. Shame is removed. Hope, joy, and peace are offered to you unconditionally through Jesus. 
the child whose birth we are preparing to celebrate. In Jesus' name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of our Lord Jesus. Amen.